Jeff, always good to be with you on Mindshare Monday. I know we were talking just it's pretty common, I think, for a lot of folks, especially in the pandemic, um, but uh, specifically even just for you and me, starting new roles. Um, you know, anytime you walk into a new role, and I think you and I are cut from similar cloth where we put a lot of expectations on ourselves, um, but we want to hit the ground running, right? We want to, you know, get uh, get going and understand the parameters as quickly as we can. I'm curious from your vantage point, just best practices, how are you going in um, you know, really focusing on that that new role, um, <clears throat> understanding all the things that you need to understand, but um, making sure that you're a contributor early and often, uh, because again, the expectations are high, both from your side and uh, obviously th there is a ramp period, but uh, companies do expect us to contribute as well. So uh, would love to hear your thoughts on best practices and how you've approached getting new roles. Yeah, for sure. So. I, first thing I'll say might come as a surprise, but uh, I say take some time off before you start that new role. I think that's something that gets lost in the in the mix here. People are just eager to you know make sure they leave a good impression, and uh, I think it's important, especially you know for me. I was at, I, at my last company. I was there for seven and a half years, so in some ways I'm not the best person to ask this question because I just started a new role a few weeks ago for the first time in a, in a very long time. But you can imagine after seven and a half years being at an early stage tech startup and the amount of work that goes into making that successful to have a successful uh, acquisition, it's pretty tiring mentally. And if you're going to do anything right in your new role, you need to be mentally you know, ready to do that. And I'll be honest, if I had just jumped into this uh, the day after I left my last company, I don't know that I would be in a good headspace uh, to, to do the job well. I was mentally fatigued. Um, this is a lot of work, you know, and I think it's important to take the time off, focus on yourself, do some things for yourself, recharge, you, you know, if you got family, kids, spend some time with them. That's number one. But number two, I think is once you're in, it's about talking to as many people as you can to understand what they do and how they relate to what you do and how they help you and how you help them. Um, I'm on a team now with um, a bunch of other individual contributors who are all very talented folks and something I've tried to do is is make friends with all these people. Um, I have a network from my past company and I've been trying to introduce my new colleagues to people in my network so that they can see that I can provide some value to them and I hope that that comes full circle that they'll provide value to me by helping me get up and running and by helping uh, you know uh, collaborate with me on certain opportunities together. I think you got to show people it's got to be a give and take. you know you 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 got to go to people and ask them for help, but at the same time you need to explain to them what experience you bring to the table and and what you can do to make their life easier. Um, for example, uh, you know we've got a great marketing team here. And in my last job, I did a lot of work within the same industry, and and I and I I know a lot of the events in our space. I know how to plan uh, dinners and things at these events successfully. So I've I've gone to the people on our marketing team and explained to them, hey, I know I'm just a sales guy, but I can help you with some of this because I, I I know the lay of the land here. Um, you know, marketing always helps sales, right? It's it's usually a one way street. So I like I want to show these guys, hey, I'm gonna I want to help you too. So I think it's a reciprocal approach, finding the people in your organization, understanding how they relate to you and showing them that you can provide them value as well. I think those are a couple of things that I try to do, you know, recharge first. And then when I get in there, try to find, you know, how, how can I reciprocate value with individuals in my organization that I'm going to be working with? Super um, solid. Yeah. How about you? I love it. That's super solid. And I, I couldn't agree more. I, I've been in multiple new roles, but over four major companies um, for myself over the last, you know, 20 some odd years. And, you know, each time that you start a new role, I, I remember vividly having the opportunity to start uh, a role very quickly uh, right on the heels of um, something that I had just left. And, um, you know, actually it was, I was I had plans to take off from my kids spring break. And I could have easily just started the the role, but it, no, I, I kept the commitment to uh, be on the spring break with my kid. It meant being in a later training group, um, but that's okay. You've got to, as you said, you've got to focus. You've got to have that recharge time, and you've got to have your priorities in order. It didn't prohibit me from starting a week later. It just put me in a different training class. And frankly, I met some folks in that training class that are still friends of mine today, and that was years ago. So, um, 
you know, I'm a I'm a big believer in, in things happening the, the way that they're supposed to. Um, I love what you said, too, about talking to people. I think uh, what's critical is right up front, you want to understand the players and the resources. So get a feel for who are the other folks that you're going to ultimately connect with. Um, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, that stuff may change over time, but you've got to understand their superpowers. How can you help them, leverage them? How can you add value where you can? Um, I loved what you said about some of your knowledge and your network and how you could immediately bring that in and have an impact. And I think that's critical that we understand that element. Um, you know, personally, I'm also very fortunate because I type fast. Uh, so I was able to take a lot of notes. I remember when I started at Microsoft years ago and um, most of the conversations that I was in just whizzed over my head. I mean, I was surrounded by all these brilliant IT minded folks, and uh, I had no idea what they were talking about at first. I came from the advertising game. And um, so, I, but I took a lot of notes, and within a few months, I could look back, and those notes made a lot of sense. So, um, but it helped me a tremendous deal because I could at least log what was being discussed in the meeting and then still uh, track and uh, you know dictate progress based on where we were. And I think that's important for any seller uh, is to be able to make sure that you're marking these milestones. And so um, even if you don't understand all the jargon or the acronyms or the lingo yet, um, you know, just try to log that as best you can. And, um, you know, over time, you're going to understand it a lot better and surround yourself with other folks. Um, I, I, I shadowed a few people. Um, fortunately, in one role, uh, I had my predecessor uh, was able to kind of stay on and help me for a quarter. And uh, so I, you know, followed her lead for about the first few weeks. And then I started leading the meetings myself once I felt comfortable doing them. Um, but to be able to spend time with some of the other folks that are performing, um, exceeding expectations in certain areas, um, I, I learned my best by doing. And so, you know, sure, we all have that um, video training or some of the curriculum that we have to invest in these days. Uh, but at the same time, I learn a great deal by actually going into the field and doing. The last thing I would say too is, um, you know, likely for any new role you may have crafted, whether it's in your mind or on paper or PowerPoint, a 30, 60, 90 type of plan. Um, so, you know, it, it's I think it's core to who we are that we be as close to the person that we committed to being on interview day as possible. Um, you know, we sat down and, and in my mind, we entered a contract. So the, the company agrees to give us the training, the support, the resources, the guidance, and uh, we agree to be the person we pledged to be in that interview when we were fired up and uh, committed to doing all these wonderful things. So um, I'd say craft that 30, 60, 90. Um, it's going to look different, especially if you're coming into a new company. Um, it's impossible to know all of the different parameters of a role before you set foot in there, um, but kind of adjust and modify and evolve that 30, 60, 90 and um, stay, stay true some degree or at least adhere to um, some types of checks and balances for yourself that you're getting, uh, you know, the training and that you're getting the foundation that, that's important. Um, I've gotten some of the best information possible just talking to other peers in the business um, on, you know, what they recommend, how they set up their day, their week, their month, um, how they orchestrate their book of business, how they orchestrate uh, the, the different resources that are at their disposal, people and uh, other tangible resources that they have. So um, get getting feedback, I think, is, is a key theme of uh, what we were talking about today, but also the people element. Um, you know, where can we add value and invest in relationships, uh, but also how can we best understand the superpowers of others so that we can help them be successful and put them in a situation to win? I think all of those things, if you put those in place, I, it's not a lot to ask, right? But if you do that, you'll have the foundation for a successful new job. I couldn't agree more. A lot of great tips for folks to have a great week. Absolutely. I love it. I always enjoy our Mindshare Mondays, Jeff. So uh, hope you have a good week as well, sir. You too.